Deborah Sampson pretended to be a man to fight in the Revolutionary War. It wasn't until the U.S. Congress passed the Women's Armed Services Integration Act in 1948 that women were allowed to officially serve their country as soldiers, but Deborah Sampson managed to do it nearly two centuries earlier. Sampson was born on December 17, 1760 in Plimpton, Massachusetts. When the Revolutionary War broke out, she desperately wanted to join the fight for freedom in the Continental Army, but women weren't allowed to enlist. Samson didn't swallow her passion and accept the circumstances. Instead, she cut her hair like a man, dressed like a man, and in May of 1782, at the age of 22, she registered in the army as Robert Shirtliff. And it worked. She joined the 4th Massachusetts Regiment under the command of Captain George Webb. Her height was above average for both women and men of the time, which earned her a spot in the regiment's light infantry company that was made up of 50 or 60 elite men who were taller and stronger than the average soldier. The infantry soon left Bellingham, Massachusetts for Worcester, now under the command of Colonel William Shepard. Samson finally got her first taste of action. During the battle, she took two musket balls to her thighs. Fearing medical attention would reveal her secret identity, she saw to her injuries on her own. She was able to extract one musket ball using a penknife and sewing needle. The second was lodged so deeply she couldn't get it out. Her leg never fully healed. Being shot didn't deter her from continuing to fight for freedom, which she continued to do for almost two years with a musket ball lodged in her leg. She also continued to hide her gender. In the summer of 1783, Samson was in Philadelphia, where a fever was raging through the infantry. She said, I was soon seized with it. I scarcely felt its symptoms before I was carried to the hospital. She came into the care of Dr. Barnabas Binney, who discovered that Robert Shirtliff was not who he seemed to be. Dr. Binney kept her secret safe while he nursed her back to health, but the truth eventually reached her superior officers. Samson feared a prison sentence or some other punishment for her lies and deception, but on October 23, 1783, she was honorably discharged. Deborah Samson did not receive further punishment. Actually, General Patterson, General Shepard, and Colonel Henry Jackson praised her for her exemplary performance of duty and conduct. A newspaper article described her as a remarkable, vigilant soldier on her post. In 1805, Samson received a full military pension. She was the only woman to receive this for participating in the Revolutionary War. After the war, she married a farmer named Benjamin Gannett and continued to publicly speak about her experience, becoming one of the earliest female lecturers in the country. Deborah Samson died of yellow fever on April 29, 1827, at 66 years old. She was buried in Sharon, Massachusetts. Women wouldn't fight in active combat for the U.S. until the 1950s, during the Korean War. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more of history's weirdness that you won't find in your textbooks. All those textbooks that you had to give back. No one has their textbooks anymore, right? I don't have mine. Anyway, there's this video here. There's this one here. There's more stuff here. There's more good stuff. If you liked it, stick around.